Well, welcome to Outlander Media. I'm Kirby Lee Bailey, and we're at the Concourse in Knoxville, Tennessee, with Eva Marie from Eva Under Fire. What's going on? Oh. We're excited. You mentioned this is the first night of the tour, so I'm, I'm really stoked now. Oh, yeah. We're, like I said, this is going to be my first time seeing you guys perform. Can't wait. We, we've seen everybody on the bill three times. We'll be there a third time seeing everybody else, but you're our first. Really? Wow. I can't wait to see the review then because we definitely, uh, you know, the rehearsals uh, been going off pretty good. We've got some um, some new little things in between songs, and so I think it's going to be a, a good show to catch us. And I love these these types of venues are close enough where you can really get that energy from the crowd. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> and the best part is you'll have to pay for parking here. Yeah. No. Nope. No. That was that was not a big. Uh, and we trust me. We just finished a, a show um, with some friends of ours, Taproot, in New York City, oh, and geez. trying to get a van and trailer in New York City, <laughs> like, in New York City. It was, this was much more our style. <laughs> well, I mean, everywhere, you know, you go to New York City, everywhere it is, you got to pay for the park. And, oh, it's a mess. I mean, it's, it, like I said, I lived in Jersey City at one time, you don't have to tell me about oh, the park in right? there. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's, that's and, like trauma triggers. <laughs> yeah, trauma for me would be driving in New York City. I always took a subway in uh, New York City. Yeah, I can see why. I can see why. Fuck that. No, no, no. Right. Yeah, we're not trying to This would have been our second time seeing you, to be honest. But the fir uh, our first time got canceled. No. Which tour was that? It wasn't a tour. It was a festival. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That festival that shall not be named. <laughs> the Vietnam Rock Good. Festival. <laughs> right. <Good. laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> we, were, was, we had you slated to see y'all on Sunday that time. <laughs> it was like, we were so mad because, well, we were the probably the least mad. I think most people that were there and experienced it and bands that were there were the most mad. We were only slightly mad because we had uh, gotten on the road. It was a four-hour drive, and then we got the, the text message, the alert, the notification that said, let's just pause this for a minute because we don't actually know if this is going to go down. So we were like, uh, well, and they said they were going to make the announcement like an hour from there. So we were like, well, I guess we'll, now's a great time for a dinner stop. Let's just pull over and go to Red Lobster and see what we come up with, right? So thankfully, now it's the joke is we drove four hours for a Red Lobster dinner. Um, cause we just turned around and went off, but <laughs> at least we didn't have some of the other experiences that people had. Yeah. We were fortunate though. We were in a hotel. Ooh. We weren't camping. Right. Ooh. Thank God. Right. <laughs> cause they said those people were trapped on there. Right. Couldn't get off the big place. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. But y'all have been announced to welcome to Rockville. Yes. And it's our, it's actually our second time playing, uh, welcome to Rockville. It's our third time being there. Um, Last time I was there was really fun because we were on the tour, but it was, you know, all of these festivals kind of like rotate who plays on what year. So the um, Nothing More was playing that year, but uh, we were just kind of like following the tour. So we got to go and hang out and there was a lot of podcasts and stuff. So many people still wanted to chat with us, which was really nice. And then one of my friends is uh, with the local station down there. His name is Riggs. And he goes, hey, do you want to help me? interview uh shine down <laughs> like, uh, like yeah sure and then i sat down and he was like oh yeah i've heard of you guys Whew. so let's just let's just manifest that i mean but this this tour holy smokes like we got the call and uh we knew that our label and our and our team have been submitting us for a lot of like really big big shows you know so we are like Okay, let's book some stuff in the winter time. Let's just, you know, with friends of ours, Taproot and that type of stuff. I said, look, um, bad news is we gotta we gotta kill two of the dates with the, with the Taproot boys. And we were like, oh, how come? They were like, because we're putting you on tour with Bad Wolves and Bush. And we go, I will go tell Taproot right now. <laughs> and even Taproot was like, you need to go right now. <laughs> so we were very very excited to be here. Well, like I said, we discovered you just like a lot of these artists. We discovered you guys on Octane, and you know how's it? You know how's it make y'all feel that Octane supports their newer bands? I mean, not only just Octane is like rock and roll. That is that is the uh, that was what was needed in rock radio. I think there's many stations out there that are doing their thing, and we appreciate their support. And telling you what, 
Octane is the cat's meow. Okay, so so when we and they're so personable, everyone there just like loves on their bands and welcomes them to wherever. So uh, I got to go to the um, party at Shannon Gunn's house for the tour, and we did stuff for um, her podcast, and then we were um, uh, at Aftershock, and uh, Jose Mangan just catches me like in the catering tent as we're all going to the stage, getting ready to like open the, the main stage. And he goes, um, man, I gotta tell you guys, that song Glow, that really has legs, you know? He's like, I've been in radio a long time. I've been with Octane a long time. And um, I just want you to know that some songs you, you really like, you catch, you catch like lightning in a bottle. And sometimes you just you push and you push and you push and it never takes off. He says, your song, man, it, it's doing well. It's, it's lightning in a bottle type stuff. He's like, I just want you to know that. It's not just cause you know, somebody's like, you know, doing, doing all the heavy lifting or whatever. He's like, the fans really love the song. And that was important to me. You know, he didn't have to tell me, uh, that about our, music. and then he, he, and then he follows me to the stage and does a hard open for us. And like, Hey, everybody makes a noise for Eva on the playa. I was like, that's so okay. Okay. <laughs> it's like, is my life real? That's one of those moments where you just go, yep. This is happening. This is, I've gotten where I need to go. I mean, Glow is a great song. We even used it on the uh, Retaliators movie yes, soundtrack. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Have you seen that movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so there's, so I was, I've seen iterations, both the first and the second cast of that movie. So I'm in the opening scene and I, I, I think I deserve a trophy for my performance. I was the first one to get slaughtered. <laughs> it's like the quintessential part in a horror film that you want to see, right? It's like, oh, the first kill, right? It's like, uh, that was me. <laughs> so we haven't, we haven't seen it yet. Okay. We always, it, we, we're big picture people. We love seeing it at the movie theater and it didn't get a movie theater where I, I could it. catch it. I know it. Yep. We did a short film theater run. We did, um, I think you can now, it's all, it's all on streaming. It's all prime. Um, yep. There, uh, there used to be, um, like, a, like we did a video on demand premiere out in um, LA, which was super rad. I got to go to that. And then, uh, who of course was there? Spencer Turnus by Sign Kills, which was super dope. Um, hadn't seen him since we did the song together, which was cool. Uh, so there's just like all these cool inroads and overlap. And so um, when they asked me to be part of the movie, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's great. And then all of my friends just died laughing because I am, I am a scaredy cat. I don't even watch horror films. Like, and now I'm going to be in a horror movie. They're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like you, you're going to go, I don't know. It worked though. I, we had a lot of fun. It was, it was a really fun movie. God, I can say we haven't seen it yet because like I say, we always see, we see every horror movie that hits the big screen. We just, that one didn't have a date for us to see. Oh, you can go and watch it from your comfy couch though. I know, but I love you know? the big screen. That's true. That's true. I get it. I mean, we're getting ready to see Thanksgiving this month. So we're all excited about that. Oh, there you go. Good. So I always like to ask this question, mainly to my female rock mm -hmm. artists. Back in my day, they used to have a festival. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of Lilith Festival? Oh, yeah. I mean, how would you think if they came up with a one-day festival somewhere it's like, you know, I'm Woman, Hear Me Roar, festival for all female-led artists? I mean, I think it's a cool concept, but I also think that's something that's been done for, you know, different maybe not on the same scale, but I used to, growing up in the local scene, we, we always had this, where people would always want to put all the female fronts of bands kind of on one bill, or they want to put them all on one day, which is, which is cool, and also can, can be uncool if it's all just because, well, here's all of, you know, like, you just rope everybody together in one genre. Like, there's a lot of oh, yeah. different, you know what I mean? So, like, I think it would have to be something maybe like Little Fair, where there was a lot of different artists. Like, you could from have, a, like, you could have Eva Under Fire, you could have Katy Perry. You could, I mean, you could flip over back and forth. All the, I mean, I, I'm all about the I Am Woman, Here We Were. So, whatever that movement looks like. I mean, I really do think that there is some something to be said for that already kind of happening in the industry even at large, right? I see a lot more um, women in rock music coming up. I mean, Spirit Box is doing amazing. Uh, you know, the um, the Diamantes of the world, the Conquer Divides of the world, the Eva on the Fires of the world. Like, we're all kind of, you know, like, now there's plush, the warning, right? I mean, I could go on because oh. I, I think that there's more and more that are just coming to the table. So, I mean, now that women have decided that we are empowered and we are here and we're going to do this thing, um, maybe maybe we do need another little bear. Who knows? I mean, I'd go. <laughs> I would go see it. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. I, like I say, we love different festivals, and you know, because sometimes you, 
you go to these festivals, these rock festivals, and it's the same lineup almost every time. Even though I'm really digging that Rockville lineup, that Rockville lineup is pretty oh, stacked when I saw. Yeah. Rockville always does a good job. DWP does always uh, always a great job. So we've been like I said, we're hiding that when we we're debating. That's like, oh, we, we might get scared off of it because it's in Florida during that time of the year where they have storms and stuff. I know it. I that's know all it. makes me nervous about it. There, there was some rain the last time that we were there, but it was nothing that really. Um, you, know, uh, you know what? It might have it might have canceled some shows the last time we were there. The rainstorm. I think nothing more set. Uh, was one of the last ones to go off that day. So Cause you never know when it's an outdoors festival. Know, it kicks in. I know. I'm like, <laughs> what, how can we like throw these festivals when it's not hurricane season, right? <laughs> it's really right in the middle of like what is this is not advisable, you know? Like what's it unless you want to do it and rent like an arena, right? Something enclosed. I don't know. Um, that's why I just I just sing. I just work here. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to come up with a way for them to fix what they do and we'll let them do what they do and if they if they hire us to come then we will absolutely come and welcome rock was one we're looking forward to so well, i'm going to say something about like one of your songs on your album is a cover song oh. and i tell you y'all did an excellent job on that because i remember back in the day i didn't like this song. yeah <laughs> but I love which one I still haven't found what i'm looking for no do that one. Which one was it? Off the album? The YouTube. Oh, um, YouTube was with or without you. With or without you. Oh, shoot. Yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> I lost my fucking mind. Like, Wait, which one? <laughs> We've done a couple of them, so I was like, all right, we're going to see if we're with doing or without this down you. the red hole. Yes. Well, so with or without you was funny to me because, you know, YouTube is one of the biggest bands in the whole world. I mean, whatever. People have a... a either a love for them or maybe some hate for them. You kind of either like them or don't. Um, but yeah, a lot of people had said that our cover was kind of a, a nice crossover because they liked the melody of the song, but it's just, they I didn't like the original. Yeah, I didn't like the original. <laughs> I mean, when, I, when it came on, when I was exercising in the gym, I was like, hell, they did this cover right here. Right. This sounds really fucking good. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it was it was one of them where we just started off with covers. We kind of wanted to do a big go, go big or go home kind of mentality right because you know sometimes you can do an obscure cover and get away with making it kind of your own right but then other times you do covers and it's like you want people to be like their ears to perk up when they hear the song and they really want to like you know uh oh my gosh i can't believe they're playing this song you know like but you gotta have big hits for for that kind of reaction you know and we love playing live so that was that was our first thought was what are people going to feel like this when we play the song live? You know, is this going to be uh, something that, you know, somebody's never heard of us before, but they love this one, right? Um, which is how we got to do pretty much almost all of our covers. It's the U2 cover. We were like, all right, biggest band in the world. We can probably try that, right? Yeah. <laughs> we did a Black Sabbath cover. We were like, all right, that, that'll make, that makes sense. You know, Journey. I don't know. <laughs> people are like, what are you doing? <laughs> these, are, these are all the songs people tell you not to touch. No. But I just got to touch it. You know, I'm just going to try it. Well, see, live music is the way to go all the way. The, the whole year when we had COVID shutting everything down for a year and everybody on the music scene was trying to figure out what to do. Like, uh, we're trying streaming events, trying this. And it's like, you know, it's nothing like being back out in the live area. It's really, yeah, no, I'm, I'm so grateful that uh, we were one of the first bands that got to go back out. Um, our very first professional tour ever was with Buck Cherry. And it was like, right, like June 2021. And we felt like we were part of some kind of frontier. It was wild, you know, it was, it was a weird time, very much so. No one knew the rules. Um, but I think, you know, we got away with just being respectful, playing the shows, doing the best thing we could. Um, but people were wanting to get back out, needing to get back out. You know, you can't, it's not good for anyone to, to be so like forcibly isolated. Um, whether it's for their own their own health or not, so I, I'm really grateful the rock show is back and, and everybody was just it was a it was a strange world but it was it was very kind you know a lot of people were like oh my gosh thank you for coming you know we needed this we needed this I kept hearing that over and over we needed this back you know was, yes we did it I mean, it was like I said it was just weird like the first concert I went to I I see this person over here with a mask on that one over here with that one yeah. and I'm trying to figure out. Some of the artists were performing with Mouse and Golly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so that was part of it. it. Was like 
nobody knew what to do. And then, and one of the things that I, 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 I guess I really haven't touched on, but um, I'll, I'll share with your guys' audience, just so you know, people that are not part of the touring community can kind of understand too, is like more about the, the bands that were making those decisions were between a rock and a hard place just to try to keep their business on the road also. Because once you're out in that kind of environment, you're making hard decisions, not just for yourself, based on your own personal morals, but like for your crew and for the show and whether or not the venue is going to allow you to continue if you're not masked or whatever the case is. So there was a lot of like, you know, nobody knew the rules, but you also kind of wanted to just not have to go out on tour and then get canceled and have all of that money get lost, you know, after, after years of not being able to go out. So I think a lot of people were very um, high strung with that kind of like decision on their on their head as well. I was I was grateful we were a support band in that environment because I didn't make any of those decisions. I was like, <laughs> whatever the headliner tells me to do, that's what I do. I don't ask questions. I just work here. You know, like I'm not. But uh, it was, and that that helped me to not have to, you know. And then I got to have my own feelings about it, but not feel like I had to make those choices for people. So right, we. Like me and my camera person, when we're not doing this, we're in the medical, we're nurses in the medical thing. And oh, wow. So okay. We never got time off when the whole thing no. shut down. We still had to go to work every day. It's yeah. Like, oh, yeah. But I'm sitting exactly. going, some people get more money on unemployment than I am going to work. Right. Yeah. You get the, thanks for showing up. You're a hero. And then nothing else. It's a pizza. <laughs> Here's, well, a yeah. Here's a pizza party. Pizza. Yeah. You know what? All of us have been in high school and we know what this pizza party means. Right? Or the or the, the uh, departments where they want you to just work overtime, work overtime, work overtime. Here, uh, work for lunch, but we'll buy the pizza. It's like, no, man, this is just a... And what was so bad is like, we could have pizza delivered to us because we're a hospital. And so oh, I had to go meet somebody <laughs> to go get them. It's like, oh, hell, you won't even come here and give, give me a goddamn pizza? Come oh, on. no. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't envy that at all. I don't envy that at all. I mean, for for the most part, we, um, you know, it was really crazy because before all of that happened, as the shutdown was occurring and flights were being grounded and it felt like we were in the middle of a zombie movie, we, all of the bands was all in New York City uh, because we had just started uh, traveling and things like that to, to do like label meetings and whatnot. So we were like in Manhattan when the world shut down, we saw Times Square empty it was a ghost town it was so weird it felt like a movie truly and so as scary as it was and as crazy as it was um we were able to get home thankfully and uh so but we were on a plane during that whole time and then when we got home we were like you know we all kind of live in the same area so like we thought about you know do everybody's telling me social distance and don't go to anybody's house and we thought you know what if we can't play we're gonna lose our minds so we've already been exposed together. We were just in New York City and on a plane together. Like, why don't we just, we'll just continue to meet, you know, be careful about it. If you're coming down with something, don't come around, you know. All of us did, um, you know, the whole, like, people will say what they want, but like vaccine or no vaccine, like we just got vaccinated so that we could go back to work as soon as we could. Like, we want it, we want all the tours, we want all the flights, we want all the whatever. So you just sign me up, we'll go. I, mean, I will. I mean, you didn't know what was going to happen. I remember no. we had to get vaccinated because they were asking for paperwork. And I went, we went and saw Evanescence with uh, Hailstorm. Right. And we had to have paperwork to go in there to, it's crazy. to the show. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget when I first got mine. My, my, uh, it was at Ford Field. Um, and I walked in. It was like a giant clinic. And, uh, like, people, like, military were there with... Uh, like rows and rows of just like look uh, look like like phone booth size clinics, you know, and little little offices where you could like call your next number. And go. It, it was like well, I, well, I like something out, the ET, something out of the movies, like man. the ET movie when they come in there, like, busting in there over that alien. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I was like, this is so eerie. So, um. I'm in a horror film called The Retaliators. I've lived a horror movie called The Pandemic. And now we get to go play rock shows and just call it all one big bad dream. And I'm so happy. So you're right. I mean, I'm happy to be here for several reasons. But um, one of the biggest ones is just that we get to do rock shows again. Yeah. 
Yeah, I tell you, that's, that's one thing I'm glad to have y'all back in, air back in on the road. We're going to wrap this up. We appreciate you, Eva, coming on here on yes. the Outlander Media. Thank you. You can follow Eva on tour with Bad Wolves and Uncured. You can follow her on Instagram, Spotify, Facebook. What's your uh, con site? Your Oh, yeah, I've got TikTok. I've got all the things. Yeah, so just follow EvaUnderFoyer.com is where we have all the links for things as well. Uh, the next, I think, three or four dates is Bad Wolves and Uncured, and then it's us, Bad Wolves, and Bush. So you got, like, six weeks. It's a long time. Come on up. Follow, follow all the way to Christmas. <laughs> all the way to Christmas. I did tell my mom I'd be home for Christmas, though, so I can't can't hang out at Christmas time. <laughs> and thank you, Eva, for coming on here. And we'll wish you good luck tonight, and we'll put in this footage for the thank interview. Thank you. Yes, much love. And peace out, y'all. Told you that you're nothing, that you're no good, and you never could be.